Thank you for taking the time to attend this session today. Presenting today will be myself. Uh, I will be going through a PowerPoint. It'll be relatively short. I only want to take uh, 10 minutes, maybe 15 max on it. And then our channel director for the West, Warren Diabrio, the good looking guy on the right, will actually go through a presentation of the software itself that we take you through a full full demonstration of the product. Complete Software has been around for 19 years, UK based and entering into the US market. The organization started with a on-prem product that was a very heavy, robust, uh, pay to procure, procure to pay product that was expensive and a long uh, implementation cycle. Product was rewritten in 2017, I believe is when it came out, for a SaaS, easy deployment, quick uh, model, easy to use, taking the knowledge and technology that they had from uh, the eComplete product and bringing it into modern technology. Along those lines, when we take a look at technology and today, what did COVID accelerate? Well, we're all working from home or anywhere. We have a beach property, so sometimes I work from beach property. And of course, we use uh, mobile today for everything, including making phone calls. Uh, in fact, I laugh at my fiance. I said, I tell her, you know, that thing is used to make phone calls, but she just uses the text and apps and everything else. And of course, being homebound in business, we're leveraging online buying more than ever. And this also means we can't do sneaker net anymore. In other words, we can't walk from one cubicle or one office to another to say, hey, have you done this? So we end up in email exchanges back and forth, back and forth, where it doesn't get handled efficiently or gets lost in an email. So our agenda today is we'll go through complete software, its technologies, run you through a complete buy to purchase, uh, through that introduction, and then you know, just take a look at iComplete, how it's different, and the new normal. Because once COVID is over, we're still going to be working blended from home and office, and that really just changes how we do things. So the technologies for the iComplete product, there are really three components to it. The iComplete, which is the workflow automation for both AP as well as purchase recs and the, the processes for the approvals with that. Bundled in that is complete capture. This is the technology that digitizes the invoice. What's unique with iComplete is we do not use OCR, it's only used in a backup situation. It's using a very sophisticated AI engine to read and interpret not only the header information, but line item detail. So we're capturing the line item detail. So those two components are the iComplete product to automate your uh, AP automation and uh, procure to pay. Procure is a database of all the line items and header information collectively across the uh, iComplete user base. And so we're really taking a look at big data, putting an analysis to this so that we can actually work on AP savings and savings take place before the order is placed. Everything once the order is placed is an efficiency process to save time so you can spend more time with family. But the money savings is, am I getting the right price on the product? So we'll, uh, we'll take a walk through these. This, analogy here when you take a look at it is basically like a bus route. I can get on a bus at any point and get off wherever I want. So if I simply am interested in, I want to automate my AP process, I can come in here, the uh, vendor sends in the invoice, it gets uh, through the AI engine approvals, and at this capture, at the AI things, two things happen. You can put it through all that automation to approve. If you want to do a manual process, you still can, but this is much 
faster getting your approval and getting the payment out. But at that point, when this gets pushed over into the ERP, that data ends up in a data lake for the analytics. Now, if I want to raise purchase racks, I can literally start down here and work through an approval process. It goes up here, it gets approved, the order gets created, then the invoice gets emailed in from the vendor, comes through here, follows the same process, ultimately out to the payment. So in essence, you can decide at what part of the journey you want to uh, take advantage of the product. We've got, I would say probably half the clients are using it to raise purchase recs and taking that full journey. The other half are simply using the AP automation component to digitize the AP process, reduce the effort in, uh, in having to do manual processes and manually code things within AP uh, when invoices come in. When you look at it from that perspective, if it's a repetitive process and we can sort out how to automate a repetitive process, I can now do more valuable things than the same action over and over again. As I mentioned, we put all this data into a data lake and uh, we've got Power BI sitting on the back end and we've got it in relationship with expense resource associates that is an organization that focuses on uh, expense reduction. The real caveat here is I can take a look now at what my spend is, what my potential savings are in the category. There's a challenge though. This is a BI style report, but it still takes human action, human insight to understand it because when you get into the plethora of line item detail, header detail, being able to understand why I'm paying more for something than I could gets more than just the data. It might be the vendor is literally two blocks down the road and they keep it in stock that if I absolutely need to have it, I got it. It might be we've got better pricing on other items from them. It could be, it, you know, the product is in from Germany and this is the only vendor that consistently has it. It's that type of knowledge that it takes a organization focused on um, AP reduction spending to come in and, and gain those insights. The beauty is prior to this, they would come in and say, can you give us the last year of all your invoices and all the data and you're going through paper upon paper, even if it's in PDF, to pull this stuff together that they can actually do an analysis. Now you, we can have the ability to say, here it is, do the work. And the beauty is the business model for it is all they do is take a percentage of savings. There isn't any upfront expense. So now we've got an ability to automate a process as well as take a look at savings. Truth be told, you need about six months of data in the system before you can engage and take a look on a project like this. We actually did a um, joint one with Amazon where we took five clients and took a look at the savings and it was very interesting. And they were small, medium-sized companies. I believe we had 32% savings on 90% of the items if they bought through Amazon and other 10%, it was like 15% more. The other thing that we're finding out is while this is of great value to the, to the companies using the product, it's great value to the vendors as well, because while you're negotiating a better price after you do the analysis, what the vendor is uh, negotiating is more mind share from you to get you to order more things from them. So it truly turns into a win-win environment. As I said earlier, we are in a mobile world today. So we do have a mobile application with this. We do have a punch out capability. If you aren't familiar with the term, what it means is the product is capable to integrate to uh, CXML uh, e-commerce sites that from our product, you can go directly to it, order what you want, uh, or raise the purchase rec, it comes right back into the system and from there uh, goes through the process. And uh, Warren will actually be walk walking you through that with an example on Amazon. The real value and strengths tie complete is the fact that it's got a rules-based 
workflow engine. So we can do simultaneous approvals. So think of it, if the approval requires a board approval and the board isn't meeting for three months, I can literally set it up that it sends out to five board members at one time. When one approves, it'll go back out to the other four. When they approve, it goes back to the third. When the third one approves, it's approved and goes through. I can do approvals by departments. I can do approvals by vendors. I can do approval down to a line item that says, if I'm buying Dell, a Dell computer and it's over $3,000, uh, please send it up to a director for approval. The punch out uh, I already covered. Um, procure is the savings. So basically we can automate the payables, efficiency of time, uh, optimize the purchasing experience, which also allows you then to have some discipline over the purchasing because you can lock down whether it's through the e-commerce sites or through raising a purchase rec within the system, what items are available, what vendors they're allowed to choose. And of course, Procure allows you to save money through the cost analysis. We will have a budgeting module coming out soon. Um, slated, I would say, end of this quarter, early uh, second quarter, that's calendar quarter, so end of March, April timeframe. And payments on the horizon. The reason I say on the horizon is I don't have the roadmap or timeline for that. Rest assured, it is in 2021 and uh, sooner rather than later in the 2021 segment. From here, I will turn it over to Warren and I just need to sort out making him the presenter at this point. So if you would give me a second. Um, just wanted everybody to know that I'm going to be taking you through a purchased to pay um, type of an approach. Um, on the screen, you will see the login for iComplete. Um, what we can do here is a multitude of things to, depending on the uh, permissions that are given to the user. What I want to do is take you through a couple of ways to purchase and then take you through the invoice coming in and that invoice being approved. And then I'm going to send it up to the ERP. In this case, I only have one RP to show at the time, and I will be showing Sage Intact. I'll actually be able to show the invoices in Intact after it's been done. We do support a multitude of other ERPs as well. Um, so on the screen, this is where you log in. Everybody that's a user that has some ability to do something can have a login email address password protected. A user really is someone that either has the ability to uh, create purchase requests and modify them or approve them, deny them, send them through a, a process, and also receive that process in a workflow. So I just wanted to let you know that you can do that. So on the other side of the coin, another user type is the AP, and that is the ability to receive invoices, view invoices, approve, deny invoices, et cetera. So that's what we consider a user. Obviously, every, anybody can be a dual user. They can approve and also can be on the AP side. They do not need a dual license for that. So I'm going to log in as this, this person named Dexter Jones. Dexter is on the operations team in the IT side, and we're going to show how we purchase. We're going to do this a couple of ways. First, we're going to purchase via internally. And you can see this is the punch out right now, Amazon Business. I'll go to that in just a minute. So Dexter has options right now, and there are many more options available, but his permissions allow him to create a purchase order internally and punch out, manage that order, and if he wants to manage some invoices, he can, and view reports. We'll discuss this in the next, next uh, IAP side. So if Dexter wants to purchase something, all he does is do that. Now, we have different types of layouts in the system that do different things. Those are all made to order. You do them yourself or we do them for you. They're very simple. But if I wanted to create a purchase requisition, I do that right here. Now we're actually inside iComplete. And the layout we're showing is layout for orders, because that's what we chose. Over here is more information on who owns that purchase request, more information on the client, the company itself, your company, uh, when it was updated, et cetera, et cetera, over here. Now, in the right hand corner is an option to add attachments right here. So if I want to add attachments such as maybe I need three quotes, 
or I need some sort of an email or a picture or whatever it is, I do that right here before I send that rec in. Moving on, we give this a title. We're just gonna call this a test for example purposes. There'll be a delivery address. Now that can be a defaulted to delivery address based on the user and the user cannot change it. Or you can have drop down addresses if you want to and add additional ones here as well with the purchase doing the person doing the requisition ability to grab an address. A delivery date when you want it. Again, that can be hard coded in. And then we just move on. We choose our vendor. This is from the internal last list of master vendors from your ERP. I'm just gonna go down, everybody knows IBM. If you notice, they put an email address in this case, not an IBM email address, but that can be defaulted as well. So we know it's IBM and we know that vendor's email address through send it to, that can be changed if we need it as well by the user or later on by someone approving the purchase request. So, so far, so good. We have our purchase information, we have our header, and now we're gonna add a line item. So all we do is go to our item code. In this case, it's gonna be for delivery. Item description, we'll just do as a laptop. Um, let's do $1,000, perfect. Move on, we'll quantity one, and we're done. It does all the information, adds the tax, whatever we need to do. If you notice right here in this green area, a department was added. It knew by the user the department was operations. It knew by what we were ordering from this vendor to code this via GL code to Office Supply 6360. So the work has been done ahead of time. The requisition doesn't have to do anything unless you want them to. If they have the permissions, and I'm just showing this on the screen, they can change the department. They can change the GL account if they want, if they're allowed to again. So everything is done. Now, I'm not gonna send this through because we're gonna move on to Amazon and really do a full uh, system. If you were to do this, we would send this through a workflow or immediately approve this, purchase it, whatever you want to do. It can be set up individually by user or ad hoc as we go along. All right, so that's how we purchase from an internal database of, uh, of vendors. I'm gonna get back out and move on. Now, Amazon Business is a very uh, direct partner with us. We have a close relationship with them and we do a lot of work with them. And we have this punch out available. Now, punch outs can be added at your request. If you want to add additional ones, let's just say Office Depot, Staples, et cetera, another one, you let us know. We can add those uh, punch outs to the system. Some of them we have done, and some of them we have to do a little bit of work on uh, with the vendor themselves to get the CXML bill was talking about coordinated in. So keep that in mind. You may have some specialized vendors you wanna work with, just let us know. We're happy to do all the work. So what we're going to do is punch out to Amazon Business. What's going to happen here, this is going to directly take me to what I want to buy. You can have a scroll like this if you want a banner or not, you know, for departments or whatever you want to do categories. But for, um, it, it, for what we're doing today, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to know what I already am looking for. I'm looking for some binders. That's the size, that's the name. So I type it in. The more detail you get, the closer it gets. By doing this function right here, now will take me directly out to my Amazon business account. And that's where we are now. I'm sure everybody's bought from some sort of site and maybe Amazon business or Amazon uh, consumer. But here we are, we're now in it. And I'm gonna go scroll down, I find what I want and here it is. That's those A4 binders. So I click on that. Pretty simple so far. You know, you've done this before, I imagine. I'm gonna add this to my cart like we normally would. Now, if I cancel this session right here, it will actually save that cart because maybe I wanna add some more, I don't know what it is, I need to come back a couple of days later, et cetera, et cetera. And in this case though, we're gonna submit this for approval. This is where the magic really happens between I complete and Amazon or your punch out. When I click that, it's gonna send this item in for approval. You can see really quickly it said sending a cart. Now we're actually in a different type of screen for that purchase rec that's been created. Amazon layout is now where we are. Different look, pretty similar. But again, that layout that was custom created. We have the title of it, 
We know it's Amazon Business. We can put an email address that would go with that, a delivery line. If we need to add more attachments, we can still do that. We might want to add a note, you know, uh, please rush. We'll just go rush like that. Very simple here, add that note in. It's now there. And we move on down. We look at our line item that we purchased. Again, of course, we could have multiple line items and multiple uh, purchase request items in there. So I look at it. Here it is. Yes, that's what I wanted. There's that cost, et cetera. And here's the analysis again with the GL code. Everything is ready. If it's not correct, I can delete it. I can come back to it. But for what we're doing, I'm going to submit this to a workflow. The workflows that Bill mentioned are easily created. They're very simple. I'm going to show you one, which is called the purchase workflow. And when I do that, it sends it out. Over here, it says I've submitted that purchase order of requisition. Now, in this case, Dexter has to approve, in his case, his own purchase requisitions. It doesn't have to do that. So what we've got in here is a submitted. As you can see, there's our purchase requisition right here. The next, what we call the next tray is it's a waiting approval. So going back to this, I'm going to take this in. I'm going to look at it. Remember, it doesn't have to do this. I'm going to look at my timeline. Say, okay, great. There's no attachments yet. Here's my timeline. Here's where it's going next to the next approver in that workflow. So um, I'm going to pause right here for a second and let you know that you certainly can ask questions on the question line. They'll go to our enablement team and they can answer them as we go along because we don't have enough time to answer all your questions. We have quite a number of people on. So I've looked in here. I'm done. It's great. We're going to go back to the grid. We're going to submit this for approval and we're done. All right. So when we do that, we're going to get back out. There's our screen again. I am now done with this. So I'm going to go out of this. I'm going to log out of Dexter. And we're going to go into the next screen or the next user, which is our bookkeeper, uh, Brooke. See, we've got a list of users. Now, Brooke is on the other side. Brooke actually is on the AP side. And as you can see, I mentioned earlier that Dexter has limited functions. Brooke has a few more. She can look at invoice packs. And what that means is if I want to view a group of invoices, say from a particular vendor or a particular date range, et cetera, price range, whatever it is, invoice packs can be looked at and acted upon. We can basically approve them all at once if you want to. You don't have to go through each one individually. Brooke can manage vendors and do a configuration, which I'll go to that in just a minute. I mentioned earlier the email address, and that's right here. Every invoice that gets submitted ends up here, whether it be emailed in, there's a specialized email address, your company, your name, AP, et cetera, at complete e-invoicing. If you scan an invoice in, say it's a paper-based, we have a path that we create to end up here as well. This is how many transaction credits or invoices you have remaining. So we're back into this. We're going to manage this invoice now. First, we want to manage the purchase order. Okay, we can look at submitted. We can look at awaiting approval, et cetera, et cetera. There's the one we just got. So now Brooke is going to look at this and approve or deny it. Add a comment if she wants. Okay, over here are more of the timeline. And it's with her right now, approve, deny. So we're going to approve this and it's done. So now, this is now on a different tray. So what's happened here, it's moved out of awaiting approval into approved. Remember, that's just the purchase request. What, I'm, what I've done in the background that you didn't see is I sent in an invoice automatically from Amazon. So we're going to go to the next part of this, this demonstration is now that Brooke has approved the purchase request, she is now going to approve the invoice. I'm making Brooke a multiple use person. All right. So now we're going to manage the invoices. Right here, it's in awaiting approval. And I want you to keep in mind this number nine and this number 36. We're going to come back to that. Over here is what we call the unprocessed tray. What iComplete does for you, the user or the AP person, is it 
it kicks out or puts aside what we call exceptions. In the AP world, it's a big deal. Exceptions are a lot of work. They can be maybe there's no PO that matched in the case here, or there's maybe a potential duplicate, or maybe it's overmatched, meaning the value of that invoice is more than that PO. On the other side of the coin, it can be a partial match. Hey, the value of the invoice is less than what do we want to do? I'm not going to act on these. I have these for you know demo purposes, but that saves so much time. So Brooke can look at this tray every day or whoever's doing the AP or processing and look at that and say, well, I have some work to do, but it was already ready for you. All I have to do is act on it. Okay, submitted all usually matches awaiting approval. We'll move on to awaiting approval. There's that invoice again. Sorry, apologize. There's that invoice over here. It's approval and now it's approved. So we automatically approve that invoice. All right. Going to refresh the screen here. What happens is when that those invoices get approved right here, okay, we will uh, send them through to the final piece, which is the awaiting approval part. So, for example, and move on to the approved vendor. When you're done approving invoices, they end up here. Okay. It says we approved invoices. I'm still waiting for the other one to come in from uh, my server's a little slow today. Sorry about that. Over here is a journal entry that's being created and created. This says that these are approved invoices that are now in my ERP. So I'm going to move to that right now as well. So what I've done so far is I created a purchase request from Amazon. I had that purchase request sent in for approval by the first person. Dexter approved it, sent it to the next person, Brooke, who looked at it and approved that actual purchase request, sending that automatic to Amazon, who turned back in an invoice, which has now been approved. So you can see all of these right here on the screen. Number four, what I'm going to do is sign in to my intact. And again, we have multiple ERPs, but I can only have one at a time. So by doing that, I can now look at my intact ERP. And if you notice here, we have top level. Um, I believe we're the only company, and I'm just going to just tread on that lightly, that we know of right now that can you know do things at the top level in intact. It's a pretty big deal. But you can also do things at top level or at entity level. So I'm going to click in the top level, look at my application, which in this case is accounts payable. I'm going to look at bills, and here they are. Now I can include private bills, whatever I want to do. I can put a vendor name in here. So let's do that. I can just choose a vendor name. I'm going to look at Amazon Business only. And there it is. There's our invoices that were sent in automatically from iComplete into the ERP. I can view it if I want to. I'm going to show you a little, little cool trick here. So here's that bill to be paid. Right? Do we want to pay it? Do we want to put it on hold? Normal stuff that you know AP would do. But over here is a nice piece here. These are your attachments. What happens here is we automatically put any attachments that went along with this transaction in both your ERP and also an iComplete. So I can view this right here. If I'm not an iComplete user or I just want to do everything here, want to view this, I can do it right here. I'm going to view that. A couple of things that does for you. It gives you, you know, a lot of control over what you want to do if you just want to look at them right here. But also, to, to be honest, if, you know, down the road you're using iComplete and something happens, yeah, things happen, and, you know, you move away from us and onto another platform, you don't lose your data or your invoices or your documents. We don't hold them hostage. And I hope that hasn't happened to you, but it, it does happen with some other companies. But if I want to view this right here, I can go, okay. I can view it. I'm trying to get a full screen for you and make it a little bit bigger. But there was that invoice that was created from Amazon Business. Right here, the whole thing that we did earlier. So I just wanted to show you that, that piece. That's a pretty cool feature. So we can send all the attachments in. All right. I'm going to go back out here. I'm going to pause here just a minute because I'm going to move to something different um, on the screen and quickly show you a quick configuration and then a report and then pass it back to Bill. So I need about five more minutes here. 
On the configuration screen, this is where you manage certain events, companies, custom fields, et cetera. But I'm gonna show you only these two right here, which are the manage users. Now, again, this is permissions-based. Brooke is, a, is an admin, so she can do these things. This is where we set up users. Now, Dexter, if you remember, has the ability to you know, approve and create purchase orders. That's it. Brooke has gonna be an approver. She's AP, she's an admin. She can also create orders. Now, the next person here, Tracy, has only the ability to approve uh, or deny Excel, of course, and it's an A pre operator. So you just set them up the way you want. You create a name, you know, you create a user, an email address, because what will happen the first time you create that, it sends an email to that person and says, hey, we want you to join I complete. And that's kind of a security thing. They'll say, okay, or maybe they'll call you or whatever it is, say, it's just a legitimate thing. Do I do this? So we do that for security. Sends an email out, they approve, they're in. You put their role in, oh, top dog, whatever they are. Um, and that's a nominee piece right here. What that means is, let's say this user is going to be out, knows they're going to be out or is ill, or whatever it is, you can go in and move their functions, or whatever they have to do, to another person. So nothing gets lost or left behind. So you just choose that nominee. On the right side is their, their permissions and their access. Are they an approver? Yes, no. Are they admin, AP, et cetera? So you just give them you know, the permissions you want right here. We have some global permissions. Can they manage the account? Now that's a little really high level thing. Um, or can they look at other events like layouts and posting? Again, I recommend this only for admins or super admins. The reporting itself, what kind of reports can they view, if any? We have access to a lot of reports, transactions, invoices per day, approval, and et cetera, down the line here, to vendor spend, committed spend, some really useful reports. So we're not gonna do this, of course, but that's how you set up a user. Now, I'm gonna go and cancel this, show you one more piece here, which is the workflow. As we uh, showed, we set up a couple of workflows. They're very simple to use. Um, I use that purchase order workflow right here, and this was pretty simple. Um, it sends it, you know, to somebody else only if it's above or it sends it right to Brooke automatically. So you can set values of certain things you want to do. You know, my approver is Dexter Jones. Um, we can add more users if I want, just by clicking on their names. I can configure criteria for this workflow. If, if it's at least 10,000 and if all these conditions are met or any of them do something to it, I can add that condition in a field so for example, if that condition itself is based on um, the department or based on the, the expense category that they want or whatever it happens to be, uh, the supplier, location, you add that here. So it looks at that field, says, okay, I look at 10,000, apply to that field. Yes, everything's okay. We move it on to the next, the next piece. Um, if you wanna move this around, we can do that as well. So maybe we want to go to Brooke first for everything. We simply drag this up to the top. Very simple to do. I'm going to cancel that. So if I want to add a new one, I simply add a new one. If it comes up, no, oh, okay, didn't like me. Hmm. Well, we have a little. Uh, little glitch here, I guess, in my server. There we go. So I can make that, uh, I'll have to go back to that. I do apologize. Slow down on me. I can add a new workflow by just doing that. Workflow name, transaction types, is it all types, credits and invoices only, or purchase orders, and just create it. On a multiple level, we might have you know, more than one person involved. Maybe this, this transaction, whatever it happens to be, has to go to two persons, operation and finance, as Bill mentioned earlier. You can set it up as what we call an and or an or. So maybe both operations and department have to approve. You can set it up that way. It can also be set up as one or the other or multiple people. Uh, Bill's example was five persons on the board. You can set it up that way as well. And maybe only one or two have to approve or a majority. Whatever you want to do, that's the beauty of our system. It's so 
easy to set up workflows and make them exactly how you want. All right, one last thing I'm going to show you is a quick look at reports. We have a number of good reports back here, activity-based on the top, vendors per day, invoices, vendor activity, below that financial reports, approval, accruals. Um, if we want to, we'll just look at one here. All open purchase orders, we can see that as well. And it's bringing them up. We can export that to Excel. We can drill down into whatever ones we want. We can, you know, create just what we want only if we want to contain um, Amazon only. We do that, filter that out, and it brings those up only as well. So you want to look at whatever you want. We can really break this down and cut and slice and dice different types of reports. Um, there's a couple other ones that show, you know, a few other things like a barcode or a bar chart. I'm sorry, like that. And again, the same thing can happen. We can export this to PDF. We can export this to Excel. We can drill down into it. I mentioned earlier invoice packs, and that's where this is done as well. You create an invoice pack and say, okay, I have 50 invoices that I just want to approve all at once. I know they're all good. You click on it and just approve them all for me but within the invoice pack um, setup. All right, I'm going to move on and push this back to, to Bill and make Bill the presenter. And I appreciate you listening to me here. And I'm going to push this back um, to Bill. It is all yours, Bill. All right, thank you. Hopefully you can hear me at this point. Um, I will put this in presenter mode one more time. Oops, it went to the very, I'm going to share my screen. Take you to the through the PowerPoint to where we dropped off. So what Warren showed was the integration to Sage Intac. We do integrate uh, out of the box with API to the products listed on the screen currently. The Sage 200 Cloud is the UK product. Sage 50 is both UK and US. Um, the complete universal connector. What we really have are two components for products where we are directly integrated to today. The universal connector is the ability to export to a CSV or Excel file and pull the data in, quite often used for going from cloud to on-prem. The product also has a full API available that comes with the system, so it can literally be integrated to any ERP that you would like. Really appreciate the time that you took today. Um, one to just cover pricing for you for a bit. There's three components to the pricing. It's a per seat pricing, a transaction pricing, and then the iComplete price, which is basically what Warren showed with, uh, with the Amazon integration. So the per seat pricing is really based in by level of ERP and then by the number of seats in the increments basically of, of 10. Um, just to give you the starting point for QuickBooks, five seats annually, right around $715 for Sage Intact, NetSuite, um, five seats for around $1540 annually. And then the transaction pricing is based in packs, uh, starting at um, you know, a pack of 50 transactions for $35, so you're down to about 70 cents, all the way up to 10,000 transactions. Uh, for $3,400 down to $0.34 cents a transaction. And then the, the iComplete buy is a one plat price. It's a couple hundred bucks uh, a year. So that gives you just a, a feel for the pricing side of things. And then uh, for contact information, we've had people on the uh, webinar from all over the world. So this this is the contact information for who you'd want to contact for your part of the region, should you have any questions or be interested in the product. Warren and I basically divide the uh, US or North America actually at the Mississippi River. So with that, hopefully we've addressed and answered how you can save money or save time with your uh, accounts payable automation, optimize your buying, uh, perfect your processes so that you have more time for family, and also be able to save money with Procure. With that, this ends the presentation. Uh, appreciate your time today. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out.